Hi everyone, welcome. I am Till Share, and this is New Mobility Live. My guest is innovator Andrew Slorence. He is developing the Phoenix Eye Ultralight Smart Wheelchair, which recently won the $1 million Toyota Mobility Unlimited Challenge. I hope you enjoy our chat and you can read about Andrew and the challenge in our current issue, which is available at newmobility.com. Hi, Andrew. Thank Hello. you so much for being here. How are things in um, Scotland where you are? Are you on a, another lockdown? We are on a lockdown here. We're on a national lockdown in the UK, which also affects Scotland. So it's uh, it's working from home again, um, which is OK, but it's a little bit difficult in product development when you're designing new wheelchairs that uh, your team are all working uh, remotely or, you know, we have, we have a rule at work. It's really only one person in the workshop at a time. So uh, I've been in this week and our engineer will be in next week and we both kind of share it like that. It's kind of difficult, but uh, not so difficult. We didn't win the Total Mobility Challenge, which is pretty awesome. Yes, um, about that. Yeah. Uh, so the Phoenix Eye Smart Wheelchair, which you designed, as you just said, recently won the $1 million Toyota Mobility Unlimited Challenge. Uh, so tell us about the chair and what that prize will allow you to do. When I, I saw the, the competition for the Toyota Mobility Unlimited Challenge, the remit of the competition was the device you put forward to the judges had to be uh intelligent had to contain intelligent systems and had to be mobility transforming for people with lower limb paralysis and i thought about this and i thought well i previously designed a wheelchair from carbon fiber i designed the carbon black chair which i was very proud of but it wasn't smart it was just a chair made of carbon and it looked very nice and it's very light and very very decent but it didn't break the boundaries and so I thought about this challenge. I thought, I've got to enter this. How do you put smart systems into a chair? And I thought, well, the most important setting on a wheelchair is the center of gravity. That's where the axle position is. That's how, where you put the big wheels, how far forward or back you put them. And that determines how much weight goes through the little front wheels and how much weight goes through the back wheels. It's like the balance point. And if you get to that get this wrong, you end up with a chair that's too tippy or fall over backwards or a chair that's too heavy on the front and is difficult to turn. And so most folk end up with just an average setting somewhere in the middle so they don't get a very agile chair nor a very stable chair. And I thought, well, if your center of gravity was intelligent and could move itself all the time to give you the optimum position all the time, maybe this would work. And this is what I put forward to the challenge. And fortunately, we uh, we got through to be a, a finalist, which meant we got uh, funding to develop a prototype. So five finalists got $500,000, not a small amount of money, to develop a prototype over an 18-month period. So that's, I mean, my last chair took me four years to develop, and it wasn't smart. So now we had to develop a new smart chair in 18 months from nothing, from just idea. Mm -hmm. um, but we did it. And it works great. The intelligent center of gravity means the chair, it moves its CG with me. So when I lean forward, the center of gravity moves forward with me. When I move back, it moves back. The chair is engaged with me in a way I've never felt with a wheelchair before. We also have a new power assist system, which we've, we've developed, which runs through the front wheels of the chair. So rather than being an add-on device on the back like others, this is an integral, the integral system that runs the front wheels. So you effectively have a an all-wheel drive wheelchair. What will the million dollars now help you to do? What we had to present to the judges was a working prototype. Mm -hmm. So we have a device, it works, it does what it's meant to do, but it's not on a production level, like the electronics aren't waterproofed. The manufacturing process hasn't been evolved yet of how we're actually going to make this for a viable amount of money. It's not been ISO tested. Um, th th there's a lot of stuff we have to do before we can bring this to market. So the, the million dollars is kind of ring fenced to take this prototype and turn it into a production thing. But one thing I've learned about uh, bringing wheelchairs to market is you can't offer consumers too much too soon. You need to kind of introduce people to, to new stuff. 
-hmm. So the, the frame of this chair is super duper lightweight. I mean, it's only a couple of kilograms. It's made of carbon fiber. So it, what we're calling this is a smart ready frame. So it'll be internally wired. So people can have just an ultra light, cool looking frame. And when they're ready, they can plug on the smart features to it as they want. So if they want the smart center of gravity, they can take off their standard center of gravity and put on the new one. And the same for the, the front wheels. If they want power assisted front wheels, they'll just take out the old ones and put in the new ones. And it'll be like, that'll be a modular thing. So this way people can, can come familiar with the idea of their chair that's intelligent without having to jump straight in. And also it'll help us with the reimbursement bodies because they know what a wheelchair is and they'll cover a wheelchair. But if we say, hey, here's an amazing smart chair with all this mm -hmm. stuff, yeah. they may not, may not really want know, know what to do with it. I'd love for you to answer some of the frequently asked questions you get about the chair, such as okay. how much is this going to cost? When will it be available? Will it be available worldwide? Will it be easy, light enough to get in and out of my car? It's important to us that it costs competitively with conventional wheelchairs. So the smart ready frame will be equally priced to, to other chairs. And then the add-ons will be a bit extra, but not, not enormous. I mean, it would still be a lot less than buying a chair and buying a smart drive as well. You know, it's mm. going to be cheaper than that. It's important, it's competitive, because we want the insurance bodies to, to cover it. And they won't cover it if it's going to cost the earth. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not going to be a budget chair. You know, it's not going to be a few hundred dollars. It's going to be a few thousand dollars. But that's what chairs cost. Um, when's it going to be ready? Well, we're we're mapping an 18 to 24 month development to take it from prototype to market ready thing. So that's that's kind of our timeline. Will it be ready internationally? Uh, will it be available internationally? Yes, of course. Um, that does depend on us getting past the FDA for America and getting dealers in America. And America's a a, a, a big market and it's not one that you want to go into before you're you're ready so our first sales will be uk based it's, you know my mission is to change just to start a new era of the wheelchair not mm -hmm. just to have this niche little phoenix chair that a few people can afford and doesn't make any difference to the most people what we're trying to do is transform wheelchairs and that's only going to happen if we can you know get, get everyone everyone using it and maybe in the longer term we can get the big mobility companies to adopt the technology as well and put it in their chairs yeah and that that that's how we'll actually move barriers you also created the carbon black wheelchair and wheelchair compatible travel bags tell us a little bit about your path to becoming an inventor and developing products as a wheelchair user you problem solve all the time you have to. You're always figuring out how do you get around the next issue. Uh, I used to work as a, as a video editor uh, with a big TV company in London, um, ITM, big news organization. Uh, all the editors traveled with their job. It was part of the thing and I didn't. Um, I wanted to travel with the job and I went to my boss and I said, I want to travel. And I thought he would say, how are you going to move the editing equipment? I mean, come on. And um, he said, sure, put your name on the list and you'll get the next job. And the next morning I got a call and it said, Andrew, go to the garage, get the edit kit and go to Belfast. And I went to the garage and I, I was faced with these massive aluminium flight cases. And I thought, how am I going to move this stuff? I put myself up for this and it was a nightmare. But I, I did it and I got back to London again, having done the job. I needed help to move all the kit. And that weekend I thought, I need to figure out a way of moving my editing kit. Um, I went to a DIY store, I bought a trolley that was used for, for carrying gardening stuff. And over that weekend, I butchered it and turned it into a trailer from my chair. And the next time I got the call from the, from the garage to go get the editing kit, I put it all on the trailer. And I was the only editor in the industry that was mobile because I could do it. And I was empowered that I could travel with my own kit. And since that day, I've always thought you need to do something with this idea. That's how it started of me developing it into, into a travel bag. I bought a 3D printer off eBay for a couple of hundred pounds. I watched uh, YouTube videos on doing CAD design. I downloaded some free CAD software 
and I set about creating the brackets and clamps. I contacted a factory in China that made luggage and asked them for some samples of some of their bags. And when I got those, I butchered them and added my 3D printed bits to them. And it just happens. It just, it's just a kind of organic process. It seems crazy now when I look back at it. I think, you know, you started with just a 3D printer and now we're, we're selling these everywhere. So that, that's how it happened. What is your dream invention? I think I'm probably doing it. Mm. You know, I think uh, that there's nothing more rewarding. Uh, I've learned this since doing the wheelchair bags when customers send us photos and videos of themselves with their bags and they're traveling independently for the first time in years. Mm -hmm. And they're going, well, you know, I, I moved all my stuff myself. And uh, that if we get the same feeling with the chairs, yeah. the people come back and say, this is amazing. You know, I've got independence I didn't have. Mm -hmm. I'm newly injured and I'm not scared to go out now because I look great. And I'm not scared to go down that hill because it's got intelligent braking. And I know I can get back up the hill again with the power assist. Mm -hmm. And it's light enough that I can pop it in my car. Yeah. That's... That, that, that's good. It doesn't get better than that. Andrew, it was such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for being here. And I look forward to following your progress with the Phoenix Eye. And thank you all for joining us. Bye, everybody. Thank you.